If you're an overweight, relatively young man, and you're wondering how a low carb diet might help you stave off hunger, lose weight, and how it might affect your health, all by comparison to a more traditional higher carbohydrate diet, then you've come to the right place. In this content, I'm going to be showing you a study that investigated all of these areas of interest. So stay tuned. Learn your body, a science-based education. All right, if you've been with Physionic for a while, you know the deal. Study design, then data, then some explanations before the final conclusions. Anything we don't cover here will be provided for you in my accompanying notes and any amendments that need to be made can also be found there, all linked along with the study itself. The researchers ended up with 17 overweight, relatively young men. The participants were housed in the laboratory and only left to go to work. All the food consumed was under the direct supervision of the researchers, who weighed all of the food for exact accuracy. The first three days of the study, the participants consumed the same baseline diet, which was moderate dietary fat and high carbohydrate and enough to maintain body weight. After the initial three days, they were placed on one of two diets for four weeks. Then on the baseline diet for another three days, and then on the second diet for another four weeks. The two diets were either a low carb diet consisting of 30% protein, 4% carbohydrates, and 66% dietary fat, of which 38% was saturated, or they were placed on a moderate carbohydrate diet consisting of the same protein but 35% carbohydrate and dietary fat. Both diets were energetically unrestricted. So they were allowed to eat as much as they wanted, yet the researchers kept tabs on exactly how much they consumed as they were in the laboratory and each participant had their own dedicated refrigerator. Now, that out of the way, let's discuss the effect on hunger, shall we? Here, the researchers are comparing hunger, fullness, and the desire to eat. The higher the number, the higher the drive for that measure. So as you can see, hunger was reduced in the low carb condition, yet overall fullness was not different between the diets. Also the desire to eat, although not statistically different, came close. So there may have been an effect. Some of this may also be confirmed by the total amount consumed as the participants when on the low carb diet consumed less overall than when they were on the moderate carb diet. This manifested in more weight loss in the low carbohydrate group as well, including greater fat free mass loss, but that is likely due to water weight loss, although the overall fat loss was close to significantly greater in the low carbohydrate diet. All right, so this is all consistent data in favor of the low carb diet on all of these measures. And now let's shift our attention to the health markers specifically. Let's start with blood sugar and insulin. Blood sugar declined with the low carbohydrate diet, but not the moderate carbohydrate diet. The exact same was true when looking at blood insulin with reduction in the low carbohydrate condition. Naturally, this might lead to improved insulin sensitivity, and sure enough, as measured, this was also seen. Now, onto cholesterol and triglycerides, or blood fats. Well, total cholesterol did not decrease in the low carbohydrate condition, yet did decrease in the moderate carbohydrate condition. The same effect was also seen for low density lipoprotein, LDL cholesterol particles. For some reason, the researchers did not run statistics on the triglycerides, yet it seems quite clear that there were reductions in both groups, but make up your own mind on that one. All right, so we've looked at most of the data. Now, can the researchers or can I explain any of these results? How did they come to pass? Well, in regard to hunger, the researchers point out that it could be due to increased blood ketones. Ketones that come from the liver under high fat, low carb conditions seem to have an anorexigenic effect, meaning they reduce hunger. In this study, although I did mention it, there was a slight, although statistically significant, increase in blood ketones with the low carb diet. This could explain the reduced food consumption and decreased hunger. The researchers mentioned that for the cholesterol measures, other studies have also shown that reductions in a body weight lead to reductions in blood cholesterol. Yet this study showed a stable, yet no increase in cholesterol with a low carb diet. 
I would add that this may have been because of the high saturated fat content, which may have countered the weight loss effect on blood cholesterol. As for the blood sugar levels, this seems self-explanatory, since vastly reduced carbohydrate levels would reduce blood sugar levels, considering the primary source of blood sugar is from dietary carbohydrates. In turn, reduced blood sugar would reduce insulin that is stimulated to be released by the pancreas when blood sugar is elevated. And in this instance, it certainly isn't. All in all, this study shows that this low carbohydrate diet reduces hunger, which may in turn reduce consumption and lead to greater weight loss. It also reduces blood sugar and blood insulin and improves insulin sensitivity. However, it has no reduction effect on blood cholesterol like a moderate carbohydrate diet does. Now, this all applies to overweight men, but what if you aren't an overweight man or you're unconvinced? Well, have no fear. I have more data to show you if you go down the rabbit hole of studies that I've dissected for you, or if you want to skip it all and just go for the final verdict, assuming it's up already, then check that out. Until then, bye.